Uh, and just to say that if you're a nice person to set the scene a little bit, this is an exciting moment for those of us who've been interested in open data. We've had a government coalition uh, in power for a year who have built on uh, the late but welcome effort given by the previous government and are uh, you know, making quite impressive progress, certainly in releasing data sets and also thinking through what you then do when you have more public sector information uh, out in the open and how you begin to stimulate the demand side of that equation and build useful applications that make public services and markets uh, work better. So um, essentially this is a real turning point, I hope, um, and uh, the essential thesis is that open government as a whole is the most important public policy lever we've got. Um, and that open data is the key precondition for open government. That's the kind of the essential thesis. That is a, that is a, 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 a commitment which is prime ministerial downwards. Six years ago something happened which I just want to quickly talk about, which was a bunch of doctors led by the now medical director of the health service, Bruce Keogh, decided they were going to publish data on themselves. So these heart doctors got together, wasn't an easy experience, whatever they say now, most of them, and there are 240 of them, very profoundly disagreed with Bruce when he suggested it, um, but they did publish their data, and the results have been really amazing. So the first thing that's happened in those six years is that mortality rates have fallen by a fifth in, in one procedure and by a third in another. That's, that, and that equates to more than a thousand avoidable deaths less occurring each year in, in hospitals in this country. So that's just one uh, important but relatively small um, area of, of medicine and the impact of public reporting has been to drive not choice but really vigorous professional peer-to-peer -peer pressure. They, they, these guys want to be the best and they want a benchmark against which they can perform and the net result is they actually, you know, fewer lives are lost in hospitals. Essentially that's it. Essentially the, the, you know, the, the, what we're trying to do at quite breaking pace because uh, the honest truth is governments run out of steam after a while and we're, we're, we're absolutely in the, in the energised phase of this government in relation to this agenda and I think we can achieve a, a really very substantial uh, degree of progress in establishing those principles, getting some of the, the data we already have out there so that we can then get on to start thinking about other ways in which transparency can deliver service. And amongst those important ways is how we, as individuals, can get better access to our own data. It's interesting, though, that you've taken the decision to make the data available free. I think other options were certainly possible. Uh, and indeed, one could argue that in making the data available um, free at the point of use for commercial enterprises or private citizens, that there is a risk that the true value of information is not brought forward. You've highlighted some really interesting examples, but they're probably not the top of mind examples for folks in our society today. I think the really important thing here is that data.gov does not become the, the dumping ground for vast data sets of information that are largely irrelevant to those of us that, that have lives to live and businesses to run and departments of state to make more efficient and effective. Um, I think what's equally interesting are the little plates um, about how using uh, patterns and trend analysis can improve uh, outcomes. One example um, from the uh, Atlanta school system in America was there was a desire to understand what were the factors that enabled uh, students to go on to college. Um, the key factor was passing Algebra 1 perhaps not surprisingly, but when they sought to understand by looking at correlations of patterns of, of students, what was the biggest predictor of success in Algebra 1? It was completely counterintuitively participation in creative writing classes, um, which is very interesting and suggestive about how this level of intelligence isn't just about great levels of efficiency, but can inform more effective decision making. And I don't think we've seen nearly enough of that capacity, or even understand how we begin to do that on a systematic level across the, the great public services, in, in specifically in terms of education and health, about how you can use, uh, you can find small patterns in big data to generate those sorts of, of changes. So I'll leave it there, but I think that's one of the promises in terms of the public sector um, that needs to be looked at much more rigorously.
Well, wasn't it a good debate? Absolutely fascinating. I think Tim Kelsey put forward a pretty bold and ambitious uh, vision for the government and, and how it sees the use of uh, public data. Uh, I think that's really quite exciting. Um, it was a challenging debate, though, I felt in, in many ways. Uh, there's some interesting points coming out around um, the framework the government needs to, to turn the vision into reality. Uh, and also some concerns that, that, that I had in particular around the quality of government data uh, and, and also ins uh, to ensure that uh, data is used in the right way. There needs to be the right standards, uh, the right um, approach around um, lineage of data and, uh, and, and I also think we need to help people understand what, what the data actually means and how it can be used uh, to best effect. I think that the analytics uh, piece of this is really interesting because it's not about uh, how much and how you release the data, it's how you do something with that data. Um, I think that there's a huge amount of um, interest, uh, genuine um, hope that being able to uh, analyse data uh, to create predictive trends uh, and decision making uh, rules of thumb to, do, to achieve social and economic ends is, is where the big story is now about productivity um, and about innovation.